Now, I'll give you an example of, and I'm going to cut back on also clinical kind of questions. I'm reluctant about that though, because it's not really training you for what is going to happen in the next semester. But I'm cutting back. You're going to get a few of them. So let me give you an example of what's going to happen. If a person, and how to take on these, all right? If a person has cerebral um, edema, if a person has cerebral edema, would giving a hypotonic solution, a hypertonic solution, or an isotonic, which one is the worst thing to give? So this is where you got to put things together. You can do this. I did this with other class, and they said, hey, God, so let me show you. You can do this. You have this setup. If you have this setup, is that's your blood vessels and edema. All of this is going to fill up with fluid. Okay, but let's talk about this first. If you have this set up here, okay, is this cell in a height Hypotonic solution or a hypertonic solution or an isotonic? Hypo. You're putting this cell that is highly concentrated with sodium chloride in a solution that has less. Does that make sense? So my question is, is the fluid going to go into the cell or come out of the cell? All right, just so no one's embarrassed or anything, because I'm hearing a lot of different answers, just raise your hand like this, all right, so no one has to see if you, I don't want people to think what I'm saying. Right, just hold it up like this. Who here says that this setup is going to put water into the cell? Just raise your hand like this, that's all. Just so I have an idea. Okay. Who here says that the water is going to go out of the cell? Just like that. Okay. What's going to happen here is that Remember my mnemonic, water follows solute. Water will go where there's a higher concentration of solute. So again, I ask the question, in this setup, is the water going to go into the cell? Now be very, into the cell or out of the cell? Who says into the cell? Okay, does that make sense? Right? So water is going to go into the cell. If water goes into the cell, what happens to the cell? Does it shrivel or does it? It swells. Okay, good. All right. Now, let's throw numbers. Because I think that's where students get mixed up with. But this is reality. And you've got to understand about fluids because that's going to be your bread and butter as a nurse. So look what's going to happen here. In the cell is going to be 0.9% sodium chloride. Okay? This solution, is it hypotonic or hypertonic? We just talked about it. Hypo. So, I ask you, Which solution, when compared to 0.9%, which solution is hypotonic? The 3.0 or the 0.45? 0.45. I'm doing this very slow so that we're building on this, so everybody's on the same page. I'm not losing anyone yet, right? Okay. So that means out here is going to be 0.45% sodium chloride. Do we agree with that? Okay. And you're saying that the fluid is going to go into the cell, right? I, I just added 
numbers. That's all I did. Okay? So, in a person who's got in a patient with cerebral edema, what um, what IV fluid is worse? A, B, C. Isotonic, isotonic. I'm going to play with this with you so you can actually see. All right? Right now, the fluid, there's a lot of fluid in the interstitial area. Which, this is the brain, okay? How it got there, I don't know, due to infection, something, okay? Don't worry about that. Just understand about the fluid. There's a lot of fluid out there, okay? Now, we could put, so, so right now, it's going to be, let's say, it's still going to be iso It's going to be 0.9%. It's just there's a lot more fluid out there. So look what's going to happen. Here's the bloodstream. Now, normally it would be 0.9% sodium chloride. Okay? And there won't be any movement of water going in either way. But what if I actually give... What if I give this person... Well, let me go back to this. And I'll go back to this. If I give, in a normal, healthy person, all right, the red blood cells are there, if I give, something funny? No? Okay. So if I give someone, a healthy person, distilled water, an IV infusion, what is that going to do to the red blood cells? You know what distilled water is, right? It's just water with no electrolytes. Now think about it. I'm just going to put a bag of IV fluids of just water in the person. What's going to happen? Am I putting, am I, is that red blood cell in a hypotonic solution or a hypertonic solution? This is going to be a certain amount, and we're going to say that this is 0.9%. But now, we normally have the same amount here, but we're going to put more water in here. Look, let's talk about food. I think that usually hits people in the right spot. Okay? So let's talk about lemonade. You've got crystals, and you have water. Okay? And right now, you drink it, it's the best kind, it's 0.9%. It's where it's supposed to be. But now, I'm just going to put, add in, just distilled water. When you taste it, is it dilute or concentrated? Oh, see, food works. <laughs> Look at that. Food works. Well, that's the same thing that you're putting in your blood. I'm just going to put water in there. Then what's going to happen? You're putting water in around the cells. So now is this cell in a more dilute area or more concentrated area? Dilute. So therefore, is this cell, that if you're putting distilled water in there, are you putting a cell, are you creating a hypotonic solution of plasma, or are you creating a hypertonic solution? Hypo, right? It's like the lemonade that we said. So in that case, the water is going to go from here into there. Right? That's what we talked about. Now, it's the same way here. All right? I'm going to add just distilled water in here. The sodium and chloride is there. So if I'm going to take the lemonade, let's go back to that. It tastes good right now. So I'm just going to add water to it. What's going to happen to the concentration of that lemonade? Is the concentration going to go up or down? It's going to go down, right? You're diluting it. I'm not changing the salt in here, but I'm adding more water. So what happens to this 0.9? Does it become... 
0.45 are closer to 3. 0.45. Therefore, I'm going to make this into a hypotonic <coughs> solution, something like that. Does that make sense? Okay. Now, with all this extra fluid up here in the brain, I'm adding a hypotonic solution, let's say water, into that person's blood. Which way is the water going to go? Is it going to go into that area or is it going to go into the bloodstream? Oh, it goes into there. If I give a hypotonic solution, whether it's dilute just distilled water or a solution of 0.5%, if I put that in a person's blood, is it going to make the edema worse or better? Worse. You wouldn't want to give that. If anything, what if you give... a 3.0% more concentrated amount of fluid going in that person, then what happens to the fluid? Is it going to go out? No. If anything, you're actually going to do make it better. But what happens to the blood volume? It increases. What happens to the blood pressure? It increases. So they can have high blood pressure. But if you look, and that's where you have to, and I'm doing this because I don't want you to read into the question. Which one is best for a person who's got cerebral edema? All right? I didn't say the person has high blood pressure also. Sure, that would, that's where the doctor comes in and, and puts everything together about what's best and how fast the rate is. Let the doctor figure out all that. But you should be able to say that cerebral edema, the worst case... Don't even throw in words, that I think it's test taking strategies. Some people just go, well, what if they have hypertension? It's not up there. Don't make it anything worse than what it is. Only work with the information that's given to you. Which one? So we're just assuming that person only has cerebral edema. So which of these is the worst one to give? Hypotonic? Who says that? Yeah, that's what I just showed you over there. A hypertonic would go this way. Right? Water follows solute. Right? Where the higher concentration of solute is. So where does it come in with nurses? You wouldn't have to figure out who, you know, who to give, but you should have an idea that, hey, cerebral, if someone's got cerebral pulse or cerebral edema, why am I giving not this 0.9% that I usually give everybody? I'm giving something different here. Or any kind of person with edema. But now you gotta think, I gotta worry about do you understand why if you give this, you better be checking blood pressures more often? Because it might be going too fast, and it's going into the bloodstream. And if they have kidney disease, you know, people who get, as we get older, the kidneys aren't working as well as what they, what they were before. So we have to calculate all that. So if it's going faster in here, the blood pressure could be creeping up. Little things like that you need to alert the doctor to. So it's not so much that which one is going to, you know, like, um, it's not so much in the fact that, you know, what's the indication of this or what you can, um, what would be best to give this person. You even need to understand about side effects and then be able to alert the doctor that, hey, it's creeping up over here. Does, 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 does that make sense, right? But in order for you to understand that, about side effects, you need to understand how it got there in the first place. So that's what I'm saying is you have to critically think. I mean, if I give you a question like this, you have to think about it. I realize that. But can you all do this now? I think if I gave you something like this, can you teach it to somebody? Your own mother, your daughter. I know they're not really interested, but if they're interested in your education and you... They'll be interested for five minutes and come up with the other idea. What happens if he's isotonic or hypertonic? Just come up with different scenarios. So here I'm trying to teach you the concept, but you have to be home, to go home and build on that. And that's where I thought the class was ready for it and not. So that's why we got to get up to there. 
but you know, whatever it was in the past, whatever, whoever you had, whatever, whatever, wherever you went, I can't change that. I have to change. This is what I got, and I got to make sure that you can move forward with this stuff. But it's, it's gonna put you are gonna put more time in it than the usual pathophysiology course if you don't know the normal. Stuff. All of this hypertonic, isotonic. That's all A and P one stuff. But now you're applying it. It's definitely doable. You can do this. I have a lot of faith in you guys. You just gotta, you know, that 16 to 20 hours, that's normal. Eight hours is not normal. It's not gonna cut it. It should have never cut it with A and P one and two. I hope it wasn't just eight or ten hours. But you just gotta put things together. It's definitely doable.